Hello and welcome to part four, which is the final part of lecture one for aerospace propulsion. So why do we want to have staging in rockets? Essentially, staging reduces how much mass we have to accelerate. We've always got structural mass associated with propellant storage. So even once we use up all the propellant, um, we've got this leftover storage tank, basically. And we'd like to get rid of that mass. So staging accomplishes this. It avoids accelerating empty propellant tanks. So let's consider just a two-stage rocket. The next logical question to ask then is, when's the best time to separate the stages? If you do it too early, you're carrying a heavy second stage propellant tank. And if you do it too late, you're carrying a heavy first stage tank for a long time. So if we have I what we call ideal symmetric stages, which mean both stages have the same specific impulse and the same structural mass fractions, then we get the result that the velocity increment should be divided equally between the two stages. So I'm not going to go through and derive this mathematical result in detail um, uh, for the payload fractions. Um, there's more detail in the lecture notes from MIT OpenCourseWare. Um, but the way to think about this is that the payload of the first stage is the entire second stage. Um, so if we go back to our rocket equation and neglect neglect gravity losses, we can define uh, this parameter epsilon, which is the M prime structure, but it's normalized with respect to the initial mass for each stage. And when we do that, we get, when we have the, um, res our optimal result where we have equal velocity increments delta V for both stages, we can get what the payload uh, mass for the second stage, which is the actual rocket's payload, over the initial mass for stage one, M not one, uh, is for a given uh, delta V, epsilon, and C. Um, so this sort of essentially tells us you know, what size the rocket needs to be to carry a certain payload. We'll leave it there for today, for the first lecture. And uh, next time, we'll continue and start looking in more detail at rocket performance and rocket nozzles, um, which is a great way to introduce ourselves to some compressible flow principles. So for now, um, you, you can hopefully you've enjoyed this lecture, uh, and I look forward to, to interacting with you guys during the first live session when that's coming up.